morning to all. Oh. Yes, sir. Warm yes, ma'am. Greetings yes. from American College. We welcome all the participants from various institutions for this national level webinar on impact of COVID-19 on India's external sector, organized by PG and Research Department of Economics, the American College. We'll start this webinar with God's blessings. I invite Dr. J. Jebarat, sir, Assistant Professor of Economics Department for prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, we come together to share our thoughts in economics webinar today. Lord, we seek your presence to guide us and lead us. Lord, we submit everyone in your hand. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm happy to introduce our respected principal and secretary of American College, Dr. M. Dawmini Christopher, sir, who has 30 years of teaching experience and attended more than 40 international conferences in more than 20 countries. He has double PhD, one in mathematics and another in education and mathematics, interdisciplinary. He received Best College Award in the year 2017 from President of India, Honorable Sri Ramnath Govind. I invite Dr. Dawmini Christopher, sir, to, well, to deliver welcome address. National webinar on impact of COVID-19 on India's external sector. Congratulations to the head of the economics department of the American College and their staff and their students and thanks to the resource persons, Dr. Madan, Professor and Head of Department of Economics, Punjab University, Dr. Aruna Chalam, Professor and Head Applied Economics, Cochin University of Science and Technology, Cochin, who is going to um, be the members for the today's program for accepting our request. Department of Economics of the American College has a great tradition and one of the popular departments from the early days. A lot of alumni occupied political and other higher positions in India. Their alumni spread all over the world. It's not only the alumni, but also the faculty are talented and vibrant. Congratulations for your wonderful initiation in the series of webinars. They are doing webinars almost once in a week. The entire world kept quiet even after 85 days. What we are going to do? Don't know. We have to find out how to overcome these kinds of hurdles and problems. And these kind of hurdles and problems that the entire humanity is facing now. Anything we have to accept. We have to adapt ourselves for any kind of situation. God gave a chance to think about our future. Yes, it's a God-given break in the tech world. Because of COVID-19, we can conduct the webinars and conferences through online. Yes, it's an exercise to all to face tomorrow's world. In this kind of situation, many of our department came forward to conduct the webinars, workshops, conferences for the benefit of their students and faculty, and also to the researchers and public. Likewise, the economic department is organizing a national level webinars on COVID-19 and the labor issues in India now. It's a recent trend in advanced materials thing. And actually, we have 
uh, Dr. Malhotra, the member secretary from ICSSR, New Delhi, the president of IEA here. He is such a um, renowned person. The entire world knows Dr. Professor Malhotra. Thank you, Professor Malhotra, for being with us, for the you know, for accepting to deliver the inaugural address. And also thanks to Dr. Madan, Dr. Arunachalam, for accepting our invitation. And on behalf of the PG head, Dr. Muthuraja, UG head, Dr. Kanabiran, and the coordinator, and Jabraj, Dr. Jabraj, and the team of faculty of Economics Department of American College. I thank each and everyone for conducting such a wonderful webinar. And God bless the entire team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. sir well, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. C. Mutraja, sir, PG, HOD of Economics Department in American College, to brief about the webinar and introduce our resource person, Dr. D.K. Madan and Dr. P. Arnachala. Good morning to all. Uh, happy Indian Economic Association greetings and greetings from the American College in Madurai. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's really happy to see many young faces and experienced faces in this webinar. I'm here to say something about this webinar and uh, uh, inviting and welcoming our IEA leaders. Uh, first, I must thank uh, Professor V.K. Malgotra, Member Secretary ICSR for accepting to give a special address uh, during this webinar. He, he will be on the line within a few minutes. Then uh, the popular speakers of this webinar, Dr. Madanji, uh, Professor of Economics, and particularly head uh, Social Sciences, School of Social Sciences, Punjab University, Punjab. Uh, I think he is known to the world, uh, particularly economics world, by way of uh, conducting and organizing international conferences and programs. And uh, through his publications, many youth and new generations economics are learning more. And he is also popular in terms of uh, networking with uh, worldwide economic institutions. A special thanks to and a special mention of uh, Dr. Madanji. Uh, 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 a big salute to Madanji. And Dr. Arunachalam, uh, uh, he is uh, professor and head, uh, School of Applied Economics in Kusat. Really, we welcome, sir, on behalf of American College and on behalf of Indian Economic Association. You are doing wonderful service at national level as well as global level. And everyone in the world, particularly more than 1,000 people are registered. And on online, nearly 500 people are watching our program. And it is also in YouTube within a few minutes. With this small note, I, once again, I welcome and thank all the people, and especially uh, Dr. Malgotra ji, Dr. Madan ji, and Dr. Arnachana ji. The program is uh, scheduled as first speaker. Dr. Madan ji will uh, deliver his special address. Then uh, uh, Dr. Arnachalam. After that, Dr. Malgotra will give a special address to all. This is what we plan. Now, first, I straight away requesting Dr. Madan Saab to come and share your views on impact of COVID-19 on India's external sector, particularly how India's self-reliant Indian economy and globalization helps India. Please, sir. Dr. Devamani, Principal and Secretary, the American College, Madurai. Dear Professor Arunachalam, Head Department of Economics, Kochi University of Science and Technology, Kochi. Dr. C. Muthuraja, Organizing Secretary and Head, PG and Research Department of Economics, American College. Dr. J. J. Baraj, Webinar Coordinator, Participants, Faculty, and Students. Good morning and welcome to the NASA webinar on in the impact of COVID-19 on Indian economy. On the behalf of Indian Economic Association, 
I extend my warm welcome to all the IA members from the whole of in, uh, the country who are participating in this lecture webinar organized by the PG and Research Department of Economics, American College, in collaboration with Indian Economic Association. So today, my topic that is mainly concerned with the India's external sector, that is mainly globalization and the self-reliant Indian economy. And in that one, just uh, I share with you Uh, sir, okay, sir. The screen is getting shared. No problem in that. Okay. 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 And see, sir. We can see. We can see the. We can oh, see, yeah. sir. No problem. No issues. Uh, sir, only one introduction. Only one uh, announcement to the yeah. participants. Uh, actually, the chat is disabled uh, right now during the session, and uh, will be enabled uh, during the discussion uh, time. So, if any issues. You can uh, chat with the host, that is myself, and uh, uh, during the other times, it will be enabled. That is, during the discussion time, it will be enabled. Thank you. Sir, you can, uh, you can start, sir. We see in the world uh, economy, there are around 269 economies, and uh, of which uh, 193 are the United Nations members. And... Uh, Sir, excuse Other me, one, sir, the... sir, sorry to interrupt, one minute, actually there are uh, people doing annotation, actually I have done, uh, uh, disabled this annotation, one minute I'll check it around. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I have uh, stopped, stopped the annotation. Uh, you can do it now. And okay. I'll, I'll insist you how to do that. Uh, you can start, sir. Sorry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, I was uh, telling uh, the uh, participants that the total economic data that is available for the 217 countries by the World Bank. And uh, in the world economy, there are 80 high income economies whose per capita income is $12,376 uh, and more. And the uh, rest are the developing economy. The, their number is 137. And the least developed economies are only 29. So I mean to say that high income economies are less one. And uh, if we see in the world economy, this uh, in the world economy is standing on the three pillars that is International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and uh, World Trade Organization. And uh, no doubt, this uh, World Bank that was established in 1995, and their member countries are now 189. And uh, IMF was also established in 1945. Uh, and the World Trade Organization that actually established on 1st January 1995 after replacing this uh, GATT. And now there are 164 member countries of this uh, WTO. In fact, this uh, establishment of WTO that uh, started a trend towards globalization of the world economy. Broadly speaking, the term globalization means integration of economies through cross country flows of information, ideas, technology, goods, services, capital, finance, and people. But the globalization is in, in itself is very much controversial. As I told you, the World Bank gives data of 217 economies. And if we see the position... Uh, Madam Ji? 
uh, please share your ppt for uh, participants is, is screen uh, oh, yes, screenshots sir. please sir it's not coming uh, yes. So okay, now uh, we can see this one also. So here, just uh, my point is that uh, in these uh, high-income economies, in fact, uh, 80 high-income economies controlled 63% of the world gross domestic product, I mean to say production, and 56% uh, of the world trade, and uh, only with only 16% of the world population. And the rest, uh, 137 developing economies, they constituted 84% of the world population and they controlled 37% of the world GDP and 44% of the world trade uh, with 60% of the world area. So here, this is very much important that uh, uh, everything is uh, controlled by the high income economies in the world. And India is a developing economy. Now, if we see the share of top producer economies in the world during 2018, then the USA was the largest economy of the world and uh, it uh, accounted around 24% of the world GDP with only 4.3% of the world population. And uh, USA share in the world trade, that was uh, also uh, around 12%. Here, the per capita income of the USA actually in 2018, it was $62,850. On the other hand, after USA, China, Japan, Germany, UK, and France, they are also following this one, and their GDP was also largest one. India's rank is seventh one, and India is contributing only 3.2% uh, of the world GDP. and uh, uh, here, it is also very much important that India's per capita income in 2018, it was only uh, 2020 US dollar. So, no doubt, we are the number two in the population because 17.8% of the world population that is in India, and but our area is only 2.4%, and uh, we are contributing 2.3% in the world trade. But our share in the world exports, that is also very much less, that is 1.9%. So here, if we see this uh, position of India, we can note one important thing, that is uh, this, uh, uh, in the past also, the growth rate of India was very much less uh, before uh, uh, the independence, I mean to say, during the British period also. But in the post-independence, our growth rate, that was only uh, uh, this 3.5% uh, during 1950-80, and uh, it was 5.6% during 81-90, to 90, and since uh, 1991 to, to, uh, till 2020, it was 6.6%. Our nominal GDP in 2019-20, it was 203.4 lakh crore. I mean to say that uh, US dollar 2.87 trillion. And the real growth of our economy in 2019-20, it was slipped down to 4.2% only as compared to 6.1% in the year 2018-19. The real growth of our manufacturing sector that went down last year, that was only 0.03%. And uh, similarly, the uh, growth of construction sector, that also went down last year uh, 
at the rate of 1.3% only. Now, I mean to say that this uh, recession in the Indian economy, that was already in the year 2019-20. But now, this COVID-19 pandemic has delivered a massive shock and sudden recession in our economy. This uh, uh, yesterday, Asian Development Outlook Supplement uh, was issued and the Asian Development Bank forecasted that the economic growth rate of India will be minus 4% during the year 2020 as compared to 1.8% uh, positive 1.8% of China. And uh, earlier in this month, World Bank also released this global economic prospect report and uh, that forecasted that the growth of India will diminish to 3.2%, I mean to say minus 3.2% in the year 2020-21. So this means that in 2020-21, India's GDP will be less than what it was in 2019-20. And there will be a 5.2% reduction in the global GDP also during the year. Uh, 2020. So the economies of USA, Japan, that will shrink by 7% and 9.1% respectively in 2020. And global recession will be the deepest one since the close of World War II in 1945-46. So therefore, there is an urgent need for health and economic policy action to mitigate its uh, consequences through so lockdown, close of non-essential businesses and uh, travel restrictions that have imposed the limit to, uh, on the spread of COVID-19, but the consumption, investment, limited labor supply, production that have already curtailed in the Indian economy, except agriculture and the government sectors, which uh, contain 30% of our total GVA. The rest 70% of our Indian economy, that is badly affected. And in that one, this COVID-19, if we see the position of the major states that are being affected by COVID-19, the largest cases were mainly in uh, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, and Gujarat. These are the four states where this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that was 67.3%. Uh, I mean to say that the total active cases in these uh, states, in four states, that was 67.3% of uh, India. And uh, uh, they are, uh, these four states actually, they contributed 71 lakh uh, crore in our GDP. And uh, similarly, this 35% uh, uh, they accounted in our total GDP. So their share in the total GDP, that was 35%. And their population, that is around 22%. So I mean to say that there is one positive thing, that is if we because 22% of our population that is affected by the COVID now, because these COVID cases are 67% in these four states. And then we can think over to open the rest of the economies where COVID uh, pandemic effect is very much less. So naturally, we have to see this thing that uh, this uh, uh, competitiveness of India, that should be uh, maintained as an opportunity in this period. And uh, if we see the competitiveness of Indian sector, we have performed very well in uh, uh, different aspects, I can say. The first thing I can choose that is ease of doing business. And the, in this ease of doing business, our rank, uh, that was earlier very much uh, uh, behind this uh, uh, so many uh, years. In 2000, 
14, I mean to say in 2014-15 ranking, our rank in the ease of doing business, that was 142. But in these last five years, we have achieved, uh, we improved our rank to 63. And uh, for this achievement, we can see that this, uh, actually there are 10 parameters on this one. We uh, measure this ease of doing business, actually that is measured by this World Bank. And uh, we see this thing that uh, on many aspects, we have improved our position, especially in getting electricity. Our rank in 2015, it was 137. And now our rank is 22 only. And uh, similarly, this uh, in the case of trading across borders, our rank earlier was 126 and now it is 68 only. And uh, uh, similarly, dealing with the construction permits, etc., our rank was 184 and now it is 27 only. So uh, you can say this thing that this is of doing business uh, in which we are performing very well and, uh, and that uh, in fact uh, improves our competitiveness in the export sector. Similarly, this uh, India's competitiveness in the global FDI inflows that I also want to touch this point because now our position in the global FDI inflow that is very much uh, uh, high. So here, actually, India's rank in the world in terms of FDI flow that has improved over this period. In 1991, we can see on the uh, PPT that our rank was 70th one in the world. And uh, in 2001, we improved it to 31. And in 2013, it was 17. But now in 2019, it has improved to ninth one. So I mean to say that uh, India is now the largest uh, uh, FDI inflow taker in the world. And uh, our rank that is uh, ninth one that is coming after USA, China, Singapore, Netherlands, Ireland, Brazil, Hong Kong, and UK. So in that sense also, we uh, improved our position because making India policy that was launched on uh, 25th September 2014. It was a good initiative of the government of India to encourage multinational as well as uh, domestic company to manufacture their uh, products in India. The major objective behind the initiative was to make uh, self-reliant India and to focus on job creation and the skill enhancement of uh, our economy. So here, this uh, uh, also uh, is a good thing. Now, if I move on the exports, our competitiveness, that is also very much high, because in order to make India self-reliant economy, it is important to promote uh, our exports. And in this aspect, we should focus on our major export. I, show the major exports which uh, we did in 2019. We, I show these the top 10 items only. And in the top 10 items, we can see this thing, that uh, three items uh, um, are those in which our rank is number one in the world market. Because uh, these three items, rice and uh, frozen shrimp and prawns. So these, three items here in the world, especially in this uh, world exports, I can say that is also very much high because uh, we are contributing about one third uh, share. And similarly, uh, we also have four items in number two position. And uh, these uh, four items are jewelry, light vessels, motorcycles, and uh, insecticides. So I mean to say that our competitiveness uh, in the export sector, uh, that is also very much high in some items. And we can promote that one and we can 
add some more items also in that context. And uh, if we see the our direction of exports, uh, we can uh, see from this uh, PPT that uh, this USA uh, is the major contributor to our exports. And uh, the share uh, of USA in India's total export, that was 16.8%. So I mean to say that we are very much dependent on USA for our export. And number two country that is United Arab Emirates that uh, has 9.2% share and China that has only 5.3% share in our exports. Similarly, Hong Kong with only 3.5% and uh, this uh, Singapore is also having 3.3%. So these, uh, in fact, the top 20 countries, they are contributing 67% in our exports. So that is also a very important position. And we can boost up our export to, uh, we can promote uh, uh, our employment uh, opportunities and, may, and make India self-reliant. So here the role of this, uh, micro, small, and medium industries, that is also very much important. And uh, this uh, MSME, that is also a very high energetic sector, and uh, it is very much complemented to the large industry and contributing uh, in our socio-economic development. In 1947, uh, there were only 887 units, and now, these are uh, in 2015-16. Uh, these uh, units have increased uh, to 63.4 million. And uh, we have been fetching products that are more than 8,000. Now the MSME is contributing 29% in our GDP and 45% in our exports. So naturally for uh, uh, Export promotion, we have to promote firstly this uh, MSME sector. And uh, in that sense, now in the COVID-19 uh, period, our government has taken some steps to boost up this uh, MSME. And in that one, the new definition has come. And under this uh, new definition, now this uh, uh, investment limit that has been increased from rupees 25 lakh to 1 crore for micro units. And uh, uh, from 5 crore to 10 crore, that is for these small scale units. And from 10 crore to 20 crore, that is for the medium enterprises. So a new criteria of annual turnover that has been introduced now, and the turnover limit for micro, small, and medium enterprises that will be 5 crore, 50 crore, and uh, 100 crore respectively. So naturally, we are giving by uh, giving new definition to MSME, we are giving more concessions to the MSME sector. And uh, in that one, this, uh, uh, we are also providing this financial assistance on all these things. And uh, our government now, has also given a package. Uh, actually, our Prime Minister on uh, 12th May 2020, first time quoted the term Atam Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. So under this Atam Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, this uh, package of 20.97 lakh crore that was given by the government to boost up uh, and revive the Indian economy. This uh, package was uh, more than 10% of the Indian GDP. And uh, the MSME sector that have been provided 3 lakh crore as a collateral free automatic loan, 20,000 crore for the stressed MSMEs, I mean to say those MSME whose MPAs is not a good one. And, uh, uh, rupee 10,000 has been given for providing this a fund of funds for this MSME sector. Now, there is a 
global tender is not allowed for the government procurement uh, up to 200 crore and similarly e market liquidities are also given and uh, payments to msme that has been made uh, by this uh, uh, government in uh, i mean to say pending payment of the msme that will be made by government in 45 days so just all this was to boost up this uh, uh, msme sir. so ultimately if we uh, conclude this one if we come on this last uh, point that is a number of promotional uh, enabling and ease of doing business policy initiatives like startup stand up and make in india that was uh, encourage this MSME and the external sector as well. Government intervention that are very much uh, required, the policy initiative that they should focus on this huge informal economy. Because when we talk about the self-reliant economy, uh, it is very much important that uh, still our 94% of our economy, that is informal one. It means we are already self-reliant. and. Uh, uh, it is not uh, difficult for us to uh, make uh, other thing also in order to boost up our self-reliance. So this uh, basic and industrial education and orientation program that are very much important. This uh, uh, MSME sector that is the largest employment generating sector. And naturally, uh, we have to uh, promote uh, this one because this package naturally can help to sustain the labor intensive industry and they have a help in uh, india's competitive advantages the economic cause, uh, crisis caused by this uh, covid 19 pandemic that may usher in an unmatched opportunities if the government adequately address this uh, external sector so uh, I can say this thing that uh, I hope this uh, present uh, webinar would suggest some follow-up actions to be taken by the government for faster growth and the development of our economy. So thank you very much once again. Thank you.